Let's talk Modulo. As I wrote that, I'm like, that sounds like a really, really bad game show. Um, so Modulo, um, another word you might have heard is modular arithmetic, maybe? Um, arithmetic. So Modulo, two numbers. So we, we talk about things being congruent in modular arithmetic. So basically the way people like to describe it is, you know how they have like military time or whatever? And it's like, I don't know, you like are somewhere and they're like, be somewhere at 14 o'clock. And you're like, uh, what does that mean? Because I don't know stuff. And then someone explains. So basically the idea is they've gone around the clock um, a whole time. And then so like that's the morning and then they go over to here. And so it's really two o'clock and they're like, but how do you? So they basically say subtract 12 hours and then you got two o'clock and you add a p.m. And you're like, but why not just tell me to show up at two o'clock? And, and like train schedules will do that. And they're like, you know, stuff is happening at 1630. And you're like, OK, so I subtract 12. So that's actually 430. OK, that's actually kind of like modulo. So one way you can think about it is you go around. Um, what's it do? So these are my options. And I'm going to be like. Do, 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 12, 13, 14. So 14 is the same thing as 2 um, modulo 12, I guess. So we would say that 14 is congruent, congruent to 2 modulo 12. Yay! crowd goes wild. Um, another way you can think about congruency and modulo is, um, if you're really obnoxious, polar coordinates. So we could say that if we have a point here that's at 1, comma, what happened to my point? 30 degrees, right? So you go out 1, around 30. So you could either say that that's 130, or so you can go up to 130, or you can go all the way around 360 degrees and another 30 in which case you can also describe the point as 1, 390. Um, I feel like I should be able to add more than 360. So if I go around again, that's 720 plus another 30. 720 plus 30, 750. So I could say it's also 1, 750. All that to say is that 30 is congruent to, so here I'll, I'll officially introduce that, is congruent to, um, 30 is congruent to 390 is congruent to 750 modulo 360. So um, it's so that's a way to think about it. So some people like thinking about it like the clock. Some people like to think about it like polar coordinates because I'm kind of a math dork. I like to think about it like as a remainder. So if I go 750, divided by 360, clearly, 2 times 360 is 720, and I subtract, I get 30, so it's 2 remainder 30, so it's congruent to 30 modulo 360. That's a whole other way of thinking about it. So you kind of go with whatever makes the most sense. Okay, so for example, I might say um, that 8 is congruent to 3 um, mod 5. Okay, so the way we would write this out, so we could actually come out here and we could say, well, 8 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. Um, you could also say 8 mod 5 is 3. Um, so, like, I don't have a good answer because all these people have, like, different methods of explaining it. And some people like um, in the math side, they like to just put this like mod out to the side and use congruent symbols. Um, in programming, um, you're more likely to see something like um, 8 mod 5 is equal to 3. Or um, I know, I think it's in C, um, the computing symbol for modulo is a percent sign. So you'd say 8 percent sign 5 is equal to 3. And so um, this is like the fancy way of saying it, like the mathy fancy way of saying it, that 8 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. Um, the coarser, more like like cool dude computer science-y way of saying it is say like, no nah, man, it's cool, 8 mod 5 is 3. And it doesn't have any commas in it, so it's not as pretentious or whatever. But they both mean the same thing, and it can get confusing. Um, there is a formal 
Okay, there's not. I was going to say there's a formal mathematic definition, mathematical definition for modulus. If you are um, sitting with positive integers, so like, and you're like, wait, wait, stop. So if 8 and 3 are positive, everybody agrees that 8 mod 3 or 8 mod 5 is 3. Okay, we're all cool with that. What we are not cool with is what do you do if you have 8 mod negative 5, or sorry, 8 mod negative 5, or if you have negative 8 mod 5, or even worse, if you have negative 8 mod negative 5, um, you get different people have different strategies. I, I have a math crush on Graham, Knuth, and Potashnik for concrete math, so I'm going to use their official definition. Um, so it's kind of weird. Their definition is that um, x modulus, modulus <laughs> x mod y would be given by x x minus y times the floor of x minus y. Okay, so we're going to go with this definition, or I'm going to go. You can do whatever you want. This is the definition that I'm going to use um, whenever I'm doing this. So I guess to say, if I had eight modulo, what did I have? I guess negative 5. That would be 8 minus a negative 5 times 8, the floor of 8 divided by negative 5. Yikes. So it's that 8 plus 5 times the floor of, you're asking me to do math and I just can't. Math. 8 divided by 5, I should know how to do this. I'm a, this is the kind of stuff that I get wrong. So 8 divided by um, Negative 5, it's not like it matters where the negative side is. But that's negative 1.6. Now the floor of that is negative 2. So I've got 8 minus 10 is negative 2. So Graham, um, Potashnik, and Knuth um, would say that 8 mod negative 5 is equal to negative 2. Um, similarly, they might say that negative 8 mod 5 um, you'd get negative 8 minus 5 times negative 8 over 5, which is also going to have a floor of negative 2. So I got negative 8 minus 5 times negative 2. So negative 8 plus 10 is positive 2. So um, depending on where that negative sign is, you actually get a different answer. It's not like I, I can't describe it. It, it, it's, it doesn't commute the way you think it's going to. It even gets weirder if you do negative um, 8 mod negative 5 because we've got negative 8 minus 5 over minus 8 divided by minus 5 and the floor of that would be, because what's 8 fifths again? 1.2. So the floor of that is actually just 1. Um, so I have negative 8 minus, that can't be Oh, minus a negative 5, minus a negative 5, which would be plus 5 times 1, which actually gives me negative 3. You're just like, just just, just stop. You're just making stuff up. But but we're going to believe whatever they say because they're smart and they know stuff. Okay, um, so that's, that's a way. Now, there's a word definition too. So I feel like I'm going into this long conversation just to tell you that we all disagree on stuff. The good news is we all agree on positive numbers for sure. So here's the fancy um, word definition, which is actually consistent with everything. It just kind of depends on how you want to play. So we can say that two numbers are congruent modulo n if their difference is an integer multiple of n. <laughs> okay. So what that means, okay, um, is we want. So we eventually want to do proofs with modulos. So we love modulos. They are so amazing. They are phenomenally powerful. We love doing things with modulos. Um, in fact, like modulo theory is just what like nerds do for funsies. Um, all the, the best nerds ever, like Euler and Pythagoras and people that you've never, maybe not Pythagoras, people that you've never heard of before. Um, I think maybe you've heard of Leonard Euler. Maybe that's a little too overly talk. You probably mispronounce it. Everybody calls it, not everybody, but you'll hear people say Euler, but it's not. It's Euler. Um, like the defunct football team from a thousand years ago. Anyway, um, uh, they love playing around with modulo arithmetic because there's just all this neat stuff you can do. It's, it's like little like math games. Anyway, um, we want to do proofs with it as well. So basically, if I'm going to write this kind of algebraically, two numbers are congruent modulo n if their difference is a multiple of n. So if their difference, so 
we would say that A is congruent to B modulo N. That's assuming, so that's the if and only if sign, just if. I feel like I have to like translate all this kind of stuff. Actually, I think I will. I think I will translate it for you. So A is congruent to B modulo N. And I'll say if and only if. So that one's not too bad. If and only if. Now we really like if and only if because it means we could actually go this way through the proof or back through the proof. And it, we're not even really proving anything right now, but it means we can go both directions. It's kind of like we could say, um, you know, something is like we couldn't say that something is a rectangle if and only if it's a quadrilateral. Um, but we could say that something is yummy if then only if it's Skittles. Because all things that are Skittles are yummy and all things that are yummy are Skittles. So it goes both ways. Like if you're eating something yummy, it's Skittles. And that's that's the way it has to be. Um, anyway, so if and only if means it has to go both ways. So we could say another way that we can write this is we can say that the difference, so A minus N, <laughs> A minus B, their difference is equal to an integer multiple of k. So there's actually a way to write this. So a minus b is equal to n times k, but we have to say um, where k is an integer. Okay, so where k is an integer. Um, but actually that's kind of like the 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 goofy way to say that. Um, like by goofy, I mean like this is, this really should be what's written here um, because there's a math way to say that too. So actually I'll do that. All right, so I'm gonna say, this is what we're trying to say. <laughs> this is what we're trying to say, but we're trying to now say it in a very um, pretentious way. So um, what we're gonna say is there exists, um, there exists for some K in the set of integers, so there exists a k in the set of integers. So it's this weird z thing. So you kind of go like this, you like make a weird seven, and then you start there, and you make the other one. So it's got a double line in the middle, such that a minus b is equal to n k. Okay, so I guess I should say this one means I was going to make it all pretty off to the side but then you won't know which symbol stands for what, and there's like a ton of symbols here. There exists, or for some, so you can either say there exists or for some, as opposed to this, which is for all. <laughs> that would say for all, but that's something else. So for some k in the set um, of integers, such that, <laughs> okay, so that's, that's what that, that's what that says, <laughs> there you go, so it says, um, there exists a k in the set of integers such that a minus b is equal to n k, okay, um, you might also see it written, um, that like a is equal to n k plus b, um, you know, just moving the b to the other side. Um, but the key is that there exists some integer in the set, or there exists some k in the set of integers such that a minus b is equal to n k. And that's that's where you're going. So if you want to play um, with proofs in modulo theory, being able to go between these two statements is actually um, a pretty valuable one. And that's one that I'm going to play with when I make some um, videos on the proofs here in a little bit.